we have challenges that can't be solved by slowing emissions. There's, there's really no debate about the fact that we're having increased uh, carbon in the atmosphere. We're going to have to do something about it. We have challenges that will have to be solved by capturing legacy emissions that we put into the atmosphere 100 years ago. It was part of the thinking of the Founding Fathers that in fact we do attempt to turn over the planet in our country in better condition than we have uh, received it. And as we are progressing, that will not be the case. So what we have to do is in fact uh, take what nature has given us and attempt to reverse some of our actions on the planet. And the first opportunity that we have, that Zola Energy has, is to combine our capacity to take CO2 directly out of ambient air. So CO2 that may have been emitted in 1929 and put it to work to create new sources of energy. And the most efficient way to do that is to do it by feeding it to plants. So think about that. This enables us to take CO2, legacy CO2, out of the atmosphere, feed it to Lemna, which then produces lipids from which we can create biodiesel, and then eventually, when burned, returns the very same CO2 that we took out of the atmosphere to make the, the Lemna grow. This possibility of a carbon neutral liquid fuel is availed to us by the discovery of Rob Martinson and the people in his lab. About 50 million years ago, the Earth was a very different place. The level of CO2 in the atmosphere was almost 10 times what it is now. The Arctic Ocean was, in fact, semi-tropical. And because it was surrounded by land, much of the surface of the Arctic Ocean was fresh water, rainwater accumulated as fresh water. Thick deposits of freshwater aquatic plants, ancient aquatic plants, uh, that uh, it was predicted were able to absorb sufficient CO2 to change the climate in less than one million years. Uh, these plants uh, exist today and we're using modern aquatic plants in the laboratory to try to replicate what happened uh, back then. Uh, we can do this by growing them. Uh, these, this is a, a, a freshwater aquatic plant uh, known as lemna or duckweed. Uh, Lemnaceae is the Latin name. Uh, it grows in abundance all over the world. Uh, you'll find it growing on ponds around here, for example. Uh, it grows uh, extremely fast. It can double in size by simply budding uh, from itself uh, every 24 hours under optimum conditions, which means it's one of the fastest growing plants on Earth and produces a huge amount of biomass. Uh, if we grow it in enriched CO2 environments, such as those we can generate using carbon capture in a greenhouse or, or in a more sophisticated engineered facility, uh, it can grow even faster than that and accumulate vast amounts of carbon similar to what happened 50 million years ago. In combination with carbon capture technology, we hope to build deliberately engineered growth facilities, uh, which would be on a, on a large scale, uh, in which we would want thick mats of duck reed, uh, duckweed to grow in relatively shallow water, water that we could supplement with nutrients from wastewater, uh, and then have a continuous harvest system that allows us to, every day, harvest uh, the huge amount of duckweed uh, that's produced every day. It basically doubles in size every day. Uh, and, and then process it uh, either for animal food, uh, for starch, or ultimately for oil. And uh, this seems uh, like an extremely uh, efficient way to take the carbon that we're, we're remediating, if you like, from the, from the air and use it to irrigate the duckweed uh, in these enclosed chambers.
just coming in to uh, Cold Spring Harbor Labs. This is uh, a research institution that's been here over 100, 125 years. Uh, also home to perhaps the most famous living biologist, Jim Watson, who of course uh, discovered the structure of DNA, the double helix, uh, back in the 1950s. Uh, it's home to um, several hundred scientists working in cancer research, neurobiology, and plant research. And uh, it's this interdisciplinary uh, group uh, that really underlie the strength of it. So Cold Spring Harbor Laboratories had a pretty good record of translating its science, very basic science, which is our mission, into practical applications. Uh, so uh, the more we can do to use the available carbon in the atmosphere to actually produce good things that we need, like food and uh, fuel, that's, uh, that's going to be the way to go. So I think it's a perfect natural uh, marriage of these two technologies. Mm -hmm.